Hello, and welcome to Trivia Week on the LGBT Outdoors podcast. I'm your host, Patrick Thompson, currently in the form of a box of cables and power adapters that you just can't bring yourself to throw out because I might need these one day. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, I'll introduce our players here in a moment, but here's what we're doing. Trivia. I'm going to ask 10 questions based on five topics, public lands, LGBTQ history and culture, wildlife, conservation, and recreation. Whoever answers the most questions correctly wins. We're going to have some fun, cut up, and maybe learn a thing or two. And this episode features our laughably bad AI-generated trivia question and a new way to win up to three points on one question. We invite you to play along, and if you have a cool trivia question you'd like me to ask, email it to me at patrick at lgbtoutdoors.com. Our players today are made up of our incredible LGBT Outdoors volunteer staff and ambassadors. First up is your LGBT Outdoors founder and my handsome, handsome husband, Justin Yoder. And though his sexy eyes can hypnotize, he gets no preferential treatment your intros are so hi justin (laughs) (laughs) hi everyone (laughs) we love it um next up is our shiny new lgbt outdoors ambassador for naperville area of illinois a recent facebook post she wrote says today i am hanging outside cooking a bunch of meat for the winter tomorrow i will probably go fly my rc helicopter and i totally want to be friends with her welcome esther barasa hello everybody glad you're here this is her first time playing this is going to be fun now we've got one of our two powerhouse lgbt outdoors ambassadors for the state of new hampshire She gave our reigning champion a close run for her money in the last episode. She didn't quite pull it off, but is back. I can see it in her eyes for revenge. Everyone, please welcome Diana Moore. Thank you. Hi, Diana. I'm definitely here for revenge. (laughs) Yes, I can see. She says while laughing. Um, Now we've got our returning champion who has won the last three rounds of LGBT Outdoors trivia. She's got a 70% correct answer rate, and I don't think she intends to let go of her tiara without a fight. Our other LGBT Outdoors ambassador in New Hampshire, Cherie Belanger. Oh, good evening. I, you know, I'm actually surprised that you've kept track of how many I've gotten right. It is Probably because I think I got eight out of 10 last time. So, yeah, it makes sense. Maybe he's keeping track of how many you got wrong. That is easier. (laughs) 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 It's less work. Work work smarter, not harder. (laughs) That, That makes a lot of sense. And joining us for the first time as official scorekeeper... Our very first nomadic LGBT Outdoors ambassador, hosting LGBT Outdoor events wherever their travels take them. If their car windows had painted words on them, it would say, just married. (laughs) Welcome, Riley. And congratulations. (laughs) Glad to be here. We're glad you're here. This is going to be fun. To keep things fair, each player will write down their answers on a dry erase board and only reveal their answers when asked. No phones or Googling, or you'll be forced to do a delightful and spirited interpretive dance to Aqua's one-hit wonder, Barbie Girl. Can we have Sheree do that anyways, just for fun? You know, I, I was just thinking <laughs> that, that you're not threatening me with a bad time there. <laughs> <laughs> well... <laughs> Come on, Barbie, let's go play LGBT Outdoors Trivia. Question one on the topic of public land. Which national park situated on the border of North Carolina and Tennessee is renowned for its diverse plant and animal life, ancient mountains, and the beauty of its spring wildflowers? This is multiple choice. A. Great Smoky Mountains National Park, B, 
Shenandoah National Park, C, Rocky Mountain National Park, or D, Acadia National Park? Which national park situated on the border of North Carolina and Tennessee is renowned for its diverse plant and animal life, ancient mountains, and the beauty of its spring wildflowers? A, Great Smoky Mountains National Park, B, Shenandoah National Park, C, Rocky Mountain National Park, or D, Acadia National Park. Looking for some thumbs up. We think we're ready. All right, answers please. Cherie is saying Great Smoky Mountains. Esther is saying Great Smoky Mountains. Jester is saying Great Smoky Mountains. And I think Diana is also saying the Great Smoky Mountain National Park. That is, is that correct? correct? Is that what yes, you said, Diana? A. The the answer is the Great Smoky Mountain National Park. Everybody gets a point. Fun fact, only 12 miles separates the entrance to the Great Smoky Mountain National Park and the gates of Dollywood, a theme park featuring one of our favorite and most compassionate national treasures, Dolly Parton. Well, good job, everybody. I've always wanted to go there. I've been there twice. Nice. I've been there once. I've never been there. Shri and I will have to go there. We can all <laughs> Sounds go. great. I'll meet you there. <laughs> meet you there. Perfect. <laughs> I'll take all my winnings from all these trivia things. You can skip all the t-shirts <laughs> that you owe me, and then you can just, you know, we'll throw in for a plane ticket. I'll just go down. <laughs> you can just you save said. on shipping. Yeah. <laughs> there, there you go. We'll get t-shirts while we're there for the National Park instead. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, we're keeping. I was telling Justin. I was like, we owe her some t-shirts. I told her she needs to reach out to Josh to get them. At this point, I'm just gonna have like I, I'm gonna have to have my own section of my closet. <laughs> full wardrobe. Yeah, full wardrobe change. It's gonna be all, <laughs> gonna be supporting the LGBT outdoors. When I go to Outdoor Fest next year, it's gonna be amazing. Like every day, I'm gonna have a new LGBT outdoors shirt. You're like every hour, you're gonna have a new. <laughs> right. And I would. <laughs> and I would not have paid for any of them. <laughs> she keeps showing up with a new t-shirt <laughs> we're like we are paying Hang her on for this we change. really are <laughs> <laughs> and if you want an lgbt outdoors t-shirt you can go to lgbtoutdoors.com slash store little shameless <laughs> plug but now on to question two on the topic of conservation this should be a slam dunk, I think. Uh, which famous primatologist and conservationist is renowned for her extensive studies of chimpanzees in Tanzania and her efforts in wildlife conservation through the Jane Goodall <laughs> Institute? Did ChatGPT write this one? This one's going to be hard. I don't even know. I can't imagine the answer to this one. This one actually wasn't. Tell me, this uh, is multiple choice as well. <laughs> it is. Uh, okay, so like uh, I wrote these like really, really late, and after um, a couple of beers, this one kind of skimmed over me. Patrick, it shows. So it's really obvious. Technically, uh, th- this is multiple choice, but I'm not even going to read. <laughs> This is like the free space and video. I've never used the phrase I'm dead, but in this instance, I think I am dead. What point did you look at this and say, uh, this is a great and challenging trivia question? I, Nobody I about 30 seconds, seconds ago. Uh, 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 Poor Patrick. Um, <laughs> just give everybody a point. Wait, no. We have to write it down. Okay, so... Which famous oh, primatologist and con- <laughs> <laughs> Yes, could you please clarify the question for us? Can you spell can it like, while you're at it? it? What- Which institute does she work for again? <laughs> like, if you're trying to eliminate me from choking on my own laughter, then I think that Aww. this is it. For, for more salt in my wound... <laughs> Which famous primatologist and conservationist is renowned for her extensive study of chimpanzees in Tanzania and efforts 
in wildlife conservation through the Jane Goodall <laughs> Institute. You're wrong. <laughs> it's a bee. <laughs> oh, answers, please. Oh, wait. <laughs> we showed ours. Wait, we're still, Sorry, we showed ours too we're early. We're still writing. <laughs> Everybody says Jane Goodall. No, Esther, Esther going with the informal Jane G. That, that could have meant anything. Wait, does that count? I, I don't think it counts. That could no. have been. Yes. That could have been. Who knows? I don't know. Jane Green. So everybody gets it right. Uh, equipped with little more than a notebook, binoculars, and her fascination with wildlife, Jane Goodall braved a realm of unknowns to give the world a remarkable window into the lives of and challenges of the chimpanzees. Through nearly 60 years of groundbreaking work, Dr. Jane Goodall has not only shown us the urgent need to protect chimpanzees from extinction, she has also redefined species conservation to include the needs of local people in an environment, in the environment. Today, she travels the world speaking about the threats facing chimpanzees and environmental crisis, urging each of us to take action on behalf of all the living things and planet we share. Yeah. So I'm glad you made it easy towards the end there, because I almost said Matthew Broderick from Project X. <laughs> wow. That's a deep cut That's, there. Everybody's looking really confused. Am I showing my age here? I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> so it was a Re it was a movie back. in like the eighties and chimpanzees were going to like outer space or something and Matthew Broderick was like the scientist that was teaching them how to communicate or something. I haven't seen it since I was like six. But And yet no? you remember it. No. <laughs> I, I well because I watched it probably like twenty times because it was really sad. It had like an old yeller ending to it. I don't want to spoil it. You watched it twenty that, times because but... it was really sad. I would love that. <laughs> oh, old yeller. Okay, That's... so I don't know. Wow. Like, it's like a sure, but I also liked old yeller at the time. Like these sad kind of endings. To... I don't oh. know. Maybe it's a trans. Where the red fern grows. Oh God, where the red fern <sighs> yeah, grows. That one too. Oh, Charlotte's Web. Oh my God. <sighs> Some pig. I don't even know how that one ends. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the spider dies of old age. That's not sad. <laughs> Spoiler At alert. The end of the summer. It was wicked sad. If you're like six. Oh. I just don't like spiders. Poor Charlotte. Poor Charlotte. <laughs> but she has like a hundred babies though that kind of take over, and presumably they die the next summer. Yeah. That's how spiders roll. Well, Is there spiders? spiders? Yeah. Well, spiders don't live long. No, right? not really. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, spiders are kind of in my my top three fear list. I have too many of them in my house, and though because they have hundreds of babies, uh, I don't wish them harm per se. I just wish greater proximity between us. They're fine when they're That's outside. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> doing their things and creating their creations. Um, cool. So <laughs> from Charlotte's Web and Old Yeller to history and culture of the LGBTQ plus community. Question three. Who was the first known LGBTQ astronaut in the history of NASA's space exploration? This is multiple choice. A. Sally Ride. B. May Jemison, C. Buzz Aldrin, or D. Jim Lovell. Who was the first known LGBTQ astronaut in the history of NASA's space exploration? A. Sally Ride, B. May Jemison, C. Buzz Aldrin, or D. Jim Lovell. Got some thinking and some writing. Does it make a difference if we just put the the letter for the multiple choice, or do you want the name? No, you, you, you can put the letter. Then you can be lazy like me. <laughs> just, yeah, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm just taking a stab at this one. Oh. So if anybody knows this, you probably got it, unless I get really lucky. I feel, I feel it sounds familiar. I wouldn't make a bet no, on it, does. it, but well, let's let's reveal what we believe. Are we all ready? Yes. Is everybody ready? Yeah, let's do it. Mm -hmm. All right. Answers, please. Got 
Justin says, A, Sally Ride. Esther is saying, B, Mae Jemison. Sharia is saying, Jim Lovell. Diane is also saying, Mae Jemison. The correct answer is A, Sally Ride. Whoa! Sally Ride, and like I actually knew this, it was the first American woman astro- or in space. Um, she was also the first gay astronaut to go to space. Not, and not that that has much to do with the actual job of being an astronaut. Uh, but that's one reason why she kept her private life completely out of public media until her death. After she died in 2012, her sister bear, a minister who was openly and publicly gay wrote, my sister was a very private person. Sally had a very fundamental sense of privacy. It was just in her nature. People did not know she had pancreatic cancer, and this is bound to be a shock. Most people did not know that Sally had a wonderfully loving relationship with Tam O'Shaughnessy for 27 years. I hope it makes it easier for kids growing up gay to know that one of their heroes was like them. Sally Ride. And just like that, for the first time ever, Justin's in the lead. Oh, hey. that's, that's low. Yeah, blow. I think there that's a good job, sir. <laughs> Nice. No, that's. I'm oh. very proud of you. <laughs> that's fantastic. Yeah. Sorry. I know. Wait, I'm, I'm still tied with Cherie, so that's great. <laughs> this is true. Relish the moment. So technically, Cherie's in last place at the moment. This is also wow. true. Wow. Ooh. Yeah. I like that statistic yeah. better. Justin batting a thousand tonight. He is. Love it. No cool, pressure. Cool, cool. No pressure at all. And like, if you don't get another question wrong for the rest of the night, you win by default. Just keep that in mind. This is true. Well, nobody's had a perfect game so far. <sighs> this is your chance, Justin. No pressure. <laughs> mm. No, I think that that wow. would be a stretch. <laughs> well, let's well, we'll find see. out. Let's... With Patrick's <laughs> questions tonight, maybe, 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 maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Only one way to know. <laughs> Um, question four on the topic of recreation. What is the name of the famous rock formation in Yosemite National Park, a popular spot for rock climbers that stands approximately 3,000 feet tall? This is multiple choice. A, El Capitan. B, Half Dome. C, Devil's Tower. Or D, Mount Rushmore. <clears throat> what is the name of the famous rock formation in Yosemite National Park? A popular spot for rock climbers. It stands approximately 3,000 feet tall. A, El Capitan. B, Half Dome. C, Devil's Tower. Or D, Mount Rushmore. Everybody's looking at me. Got thumbs up. We're ready. Diana's struggling a little bit. There are two in Yosemite. (laughs) But which one is the answer? I know. (laughs) Just pick the correct one. (laughs) Yosemite is also a national park I have been to. Yes. Gorgeous. All right. Is everybody ready? Answers, please. Got A, El Capitan, A, El Capitan. Cherie says B, Half Dome. Oh. Diana, El Capitan. El Capitan. The correct answer is A, El Capitan. Cherie. Justin, <laughs> e- farther. Justin, Esther, and Diana all get a point. Yeah, I'm saving it up for that last <laughs> question. They come behind. They're oh just trying to make it really dramatic here tonight. She's going to take the come from behind answer. Or maybe I did get ice, like waiting for Diana to show up for 30 minutes. <laughs> She's taking her off her game. <laughs> Cherie know. spotting us all a handicap. I love that. <laughs> so compassionate. Just, I'm just trying to keep it interesting. <laughs> That's all. It's all a mind game. Awesome. All right. This is a fun one. <laughs> He says, um, question five on the topic of wildlife, name two of the top 10 most abundant birds on planet Earth. 
Name two of the top ten most abundant birds on planet Earth. How specific are we getting here? Um, not really. Right. So, like, obviously, this wouldn't be an answer, right? But you know, it could be like an eagle or a bald eagle. Do you see what I'm saying? Right. I I would accept eagle. Okay. As in, that's the right answer. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Justin. That is one of the answers. It's <sighs> all a mind game. I'm right. looking for two of the top ten most abundant birds on planet Earth. Give me a thumbs up when you're ready. Mm. Justin, Diane is ready. Not yet, not yet. Esther and Cherie are still thinking Esther's ready. Shree is like big bird. <laughs> Tweety bird. And <laughs> Does it matter if they're wild or not? Parakeets? Uh, the, the question is most abundant Just... er- birds on planet Earth. Let's go. All right, fine. I, I all right, good. cool. We're all ready. Uh, answers, please. Justin says starling and sparrow. Um, those rank seven and eight. Um, so Justin gets a point. Esther says sparrow and geese. Um, geese are not in the top 10, Esther. Sparrow is. Uh, it seems <laughs> like it around the lakes here. This is big planet. Um, Diana says duck and gull. Um, those are not on my list. What? <laughs> And Cherie Sh- says pigeon and chicken. I knew she was going to put chicken when she asked if it had to be a wild bird. <laughs> um, pigeon is not on my list. So Justin, <laughs> again, batting Holy a thousand. Cow. Uh, Dang. Can we go back to Sheree's facial expression there, just so I can get a screenshot of that? I, I kind of wish we had instant replay because, <laughs> right? I, but but um, I, I know this is not a shot in front of the moment. look of absolute indignation on my face, followed by my notebook getting tossed across the room. <laughs> yes. Did you enjoy that? <laughs> a little bit, and like I'm not even playing. <laughs> But uh, the top 10 are, uh, number one is the domestic chicken with 30 billion. Um, Two, red-billed Kalea. Three is morning dove. Four, American robin. Five, common pheasant. Six, red-winged blackbird. Seven, chipping sparrow. Uh, Eight, common starling. Nine, common swift. And ten, the yellow rumped warbler. So, aren't doves a species of pigeon? Um, I don't they make know. like the same sound. No, I don't different. believe so. But come on, everybody has ducks. I mean, come on, ducks are everywhere. Like, who made this list? <laughs> I used to have a little family of mourning doves that tried to live in one of my planters on my deck. Is a dove? A type of chicken. I. Sorry, and that is Sheree go... trying to uh, ask. <laughs> is a dove a type of pigeon? Siri, if a dove is a type. According of... to National Parks Board, pigeons and doves belong to the same family of birds, which consists of more than three hundred species of birds. They share similar features like thick and round bodies, short necks, and thin peaks, but doves are generally of a smaller stature, while pigeons are often larger and stubbier. They're different. (laughs) So I believe what I was looking for there. They belong to the same family of birds, Columbidae. Maybe same family. So had you said Columbidae? Had I said that? I don't know how to say it. It's you can you can reject it. That's my challenge. Hmm. Re- well, how'd you word the question again? Name two of the top ten most abundant birds on planet Earth. 
So that wasn't the t- that wasn't a bird. That's <laughs> see, but when family. I asked for my clarification, I said, "Wow!" But when I asked for my clarification at the beginning, I was like, "So let's say that, you know, bald eagle or eagle." And no. he said he would take eagle in that case. I think pigeon pigeon you would have said dove, but you said morning dove. <clears throat> I didn't say morning dove. I said pigeon. I, th- I which is a, that's a very broad class of bird. Oh, you said pre- oh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. But a morning dove is not a pigeon. Yeah, he said morning dove, which They're is a very cousins, specific so type. Not the same. Type. Yeah. No, they're the same family of birds. Yeah, whatever, it's fine. <laughs> I see what's going on here. Was that a two point question? That, that was not a two point question. No, oh, it was just one. So, so we are at our halfway <laughs> point um, in this contentious race. It's going great. <laughs> it is suddenly contentious. Go, Justin. I'm feeling really good about this episode, y'all. Uh, I am. Can, can we get more questions like question number two now? <laughs> <laughs> And we haven't even gotten to the AI generated one yet. Oh, um, Riley, can we get a score update, please? Yeah. So Justin is in the lead with five points. Um, we have Diana and Esther tied for three, and Cherie with two points. Oh, wait. Why am I feeling bad? For her? <laughs> hey, uh, don't get regardless two. of how this ends. You still owe me three T-shirts. Yes. The, this is and regardless fact, of how and, it ends, you still need to reach out to Josh. <laughs> <laughs> and question 10 gives us an opportunity to win up to three points. Ooh. Um, and that, that was predetermined uh, <laughs> before we started playing <laughs> this round of trivia. This episode of the LGBT Outdoors podcast is brought to you by the Monterey Bay Aquarium, where you can experience the wonder beneath the waves and celebrate your connection to the ocean. Join Monterey Bay Aquarium in advocating for a healthy ocean. Together, we can tackle climate change and stop plastic pollutions at the source. Sign up for the Ocean Action email to learn how you can protect the oceans that connect us all at montereybayaquarium.org slash act. But moving on to the second half, question six, going back to the topic of public lands. What is the smallest U.S. national park? The smallest U.S. national park. See, I'm looking at Justin's face right now, and I want to know what he did to get the the question and answer sheet before the show tonight. I did, I did not. The second you said <laughs> that, like his face just lit up. He's like, "Oh, I know that one too." Because I just heard it on a podcast. Is this multiple choice? And you? Wait, nope. I'm not going to. This is not multiple oh. choice. Smallest national park. <clears throat> oh man. Correct. The smallest <sighs> national park. Two of these answers I actually got from uh, other podcasts recently. Really. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Well, I've only got one that I know that's really small. I'm going to get this one wrong too, though. If it helps Spell at it. all, I didn't even know that this was a national park. Is it a historical park or just a national park? It has the designation of a national park. Ooh, then I'm definitely wrong. Oh, well. But could fall under National Historic Park? I, I don't know how to answer that. I'm being fully honest. I don't know how the, to spell it. If that helps anybody, I shouldn't the, say that. But spelling doesn't count, right? There is correct. Um, there is definitely a, a historical aspect to why this park is here and why it's important. But that's all I know. Um, how about we thumbs up if we're already? Uh, Watch me be wrong on this, how confident I am, and then I'm going to be wrong. (laughs) Diana doesn't look certain of herself at all. No? Are you ready, though? All right. Answers, please. Uh, Justin is saying Shenandoah. Esther is saying Lowell. Diana is saying Central Park. (laughs) And Cherie is saying St. Gardens. St. Gardens. 
St. Gardens. Gardens. Yeah. Oh, I've been there too. You have been there, yes. It's quite small. It is the only national park in New Hampshire. Ooh. All of those are incorrect. <laughs> oh, really? Justin, uh, I actually thought that you might know this one. Um, but the answer is Gateway National Park, or sorry, Gateway oh. Arch National Park. Uh, oh, it's St. Louis. It is Louis. a mere 91 acres. It is the smallest national park and is located downtown St. Louis, adjacent to the Mississippi River. The sleek and striking 630 foot tall Gateway Arch, imagine a 63 story skyscraper, is a symbol of the opening or gateway to westward expansion. I was the reason I, I, yeah, now that you say that, that totally makes sense. But Shenandoah is like right next to Washington, D.C., and is like one of the smallest. Apparently, not the smallest. Not the smallest. Size doesn't matter. (laughs) Um, Apparently, it does for this question. How many acres did you say it was? Oh, 91. 91. All right. It's 91 acres. Now I'm curious to know how <laughs> yeah, many St. acres. Yeah, St. Gaudens is 370 acres. I had to look that up. <laughs> That's a little bit bigger. It is. Fact, which it's one is bigger that? than I thought it was. St. Gaudens is 370 acres. I had figured it was like 20. <laughs> oh. So, Hang on. I got to see. I was out. Shenandoah. I, I love how I'm being <laughs> We're just going to double check that, okay? <laughs> well, based off of question two, I don't, I don't blame you. <laughs> Sorry, how big was that one? Have you ever been up in the arch? What's that? How big was that one? St. Gaudens was 370 acres. Oh, okay. Shenandoah is quite a bit so, bigger yeah. than that. Yeah, I think so. Okay. I have not Shenandoah been up in the huge. arch. The, uh, the elevator kind of scares me, I think. Me too. A little bit claustrophobic. Um, I, I was in the arch once as a kid. And that's it. You're like, nope, done. That's one it. One and done. Been past it probably 20 times. but yeah, It's definitely the smallest elevator I've ever been in. Uh, question seven on the topic of conservation. The infamous hole in the ozone layer over 10 million square miles in size lies mostly over what continent? The infamous hole in the ozone layer, which is over 10 million square miles in size lies mostly over what continent? Where is the hole in the ozone layer? Three looks like coming back. Thumbs up. Thumbs up from Esther. Diana's got a thumbs up. What continent? Correct. We've got seven to choose from. One in what seven. Con- <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Diana. <laughs> what continent is the hole in the ozone layer over? Would you like the multiple choice for this, Justin? Yeah. I, I would. Do I get one? <laughs> Are you all confident about this? Yeah, really. I'm extremely confident yeah. of this one. Yep. I was hoping he was going to ask what caused it. <laughs> That's objective. <laughs> Jane Goodall. <laughs> Matthew Broderick and Project X. Yeah. <laughs> pigeons. <laughs> or pigeons. All right. You ready, Justin? (laughs) Sure. (laughs) All right. Answers, please. Justin says Europe. Everyone else says Antarctica. The correct answer is Antarctica. Esther, Diana, and Sheree get it right. Now, the size of the ozone hole fluctuates on a regular basis. From August to October, the ozone hole increases in size, reaching a maximum between mid-September and mid-October. When temperatures high up in the stratosphere start to rise in the southern hemisphere, the ozone depletion slows. The polar vortex weakens and finally breaks down. And by the end of December, the ozone levels return to normal. Uh, What this doesn't say is how big it is when it's normal. 
Um, but there is a link in the show notes with more fun facts about the hole in the ozone layer. It's so much fun. Yay. <laughs> so much fun. Okay. Moving on to something a little bit more lighthearted. Uh, question eight in uh, the topic of history slash culture. Which of the Golden Girls had a gay brother? Uh, oh, Sheree, your face. I'm so sorry. You're like, what the hell kind of question is that? Um, which of the Golden Girls had a gay brother? Could you, could you tell us the name Justin of the Golden Girls? Like who, which, which were the Golden Girls? Oh, Diane! Is this multiple Crush choice? My heart. This is a thing. So there's only two gay men in this thing right now. And I, the Golden Girls is like a gay guy thing, isn't it? I used it? to watch it as a kid, but Apparently? Like, I don't remember. Yeah, it's like it's just... I have no idea. Does this? <laughs> if I didn't know it, I would challenge it on, <laughs> on culture and history. But yeah, I feel good with this. I don't even know one of the Golden Girls' names, and it's only the actress, mm. not even any of their character names. I'm just going to name it. So the character, character names are Sophia Petrillo, Rose Nyland, Blanche Devereaux, and Dorothy Zbornak. Yeah. See. You just counted that off on your finger. You didn't even have to reference that. <laughs> oh no! They all are thrilled with this, with this question. <laughs> wow! So uh, apparently, Golden Girls uh, w w is targeted toward gay men. <laughs> And not our amazing <laughs> women folk. I have a feeling it was originally targeted towards old women, but probably back when the show was new. <clears throat> old women and gay men. Yes. There's a lot of overlap there. Yeah. Uh, which I'm going to get hate mail for that. <laughs> but um, Sorry. Do, do we have thumbs up? Or... Sure. Let's do it. Like, okay. Yeah. Cool. Uh, answers, please. We've got Blanche, Blanche. Sophia and Diana, I can't read yours. And Blanche, the correct wow. answer is indeed Blanche Devereaux. So Cherie, Diana, and Justin get it right. Um, I was going to tell you, like, that was a lucky guess. I pulled that out. I had so high I like, hopes for that until somehow. Sure. You gave them get, you gave the, uh, the names. Should have stuck the, with the, that. The, oh, yeah. If you hadn't given the names, that I was toast. That was it. <laughs> I was just going to say Betty White. Because she's the only one I know. <laughs> <laughs> no, but she had. Uh, we watched this episode last night. The a uh, uh, lesbian fall in wait, love wait, with wait, her. Wait, 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 wait! You were just watching an episode the other night. Yes, last night I believe he said. <laughs> oh my gosh! But it wasn't the episode with Blanche's brother, though. Uh huh. Oh no, I'm gonna I'm in trouble. Um, the Golden <laughs> Girls is an American sitcom created by Susan Harris that aired on NBC from September 1985 to May 1992, with a total of 180 half hour episodes spanning seven seasons. Um, the show is about four older women who share a home in Miami, Florida. The show tackled many social topics in a way that was remarkably progressive at the time. Given a lot of it didn't age well and might be viewed as insensitive today, but at the time they made an effort. So thank you for being a friend. <laughs> Which is part of the yeah, theme I song. Remember that. Uh -huh. uh, but uh, that's missed on um, sixty percent of <laughs> you tonight. So moving on. <laughs> oh, th this is our AI oh. question uh, as we continue to go down the road. <laughs> Oh boy. We're we're in an Australian oh. spiral right now. <laughs> Going to Antarctica. Like you do know that if you flush a toilet in Australia, it spins in the opposite direction. It goes direction. backwards. Th yeah. That's or maybe like ours right goes now. backwards. That's right, It's Justin. possible. That, that also happens in South America. 
It does. <laughs> yes, anywhere south of the equator. And Kenya. Why do we always say Australia? This is very true. <laughs> Oh, that's a good question. I bet it does that in Antarctica too, <laughs> which is worth right underneath that, that ozone hole. <laughs> oh, before we thoroughly digress, um, question nine AI question on the topic of recreation. <laughs> which type of recreational activity involving the act of carefully painting intricate designs on small rocks and hiding them in public spaces for others to find has gained popularity as a way to promote mental health and well-being and community connection? A, rock caching. B, rock balancing. C, rock painting. Or D, rock hiding. This is rock caching, balancing, painting, or hiding. Which type of recreational activity involves the act of carefully painting intricate designs on small rocks and hiding them in public spaces for others to find? I have never heard of this. <laughs> Somebody telling me I'm not the only one. There's actually an amazing YouTube channel uh, called Hike One, Paint One, where this person paints these very intricate rocks. As a matter of fact, I've got one here because he sent me one. And so he paints these amazing paintings on rocks and um, he wraps them up and hides them on hiking trails. And you found it? that? Oh, that's gorgeous. Correct. Oh, nice. So, no, he sent oh. me this one because I sent him, like, I I used to have a YouTube channel where I did a lot of hiking and stuff like that. So, we sent him a postcard and he, and I had, like, a drawing and he won it. And so, he sent me this rock and it's actually got a very, very nice message on the back that for the things that I was going through at the time it was actually a very inspirational message. So, I keep this right over here. Oh. On my so, are you table. supposed to find these rocks oh, or they just kind of happen? You just like <clears throat> they're out there for people to find just happening upon them. Yeah. So, he'd, he'd have it wrapped up and he'd set it like on the side of a trail somewhere and eventually somebody would find it and his email address would be on it. And so, he would get emails from like random people who found his rocks on trail and then they got to keep them. And so half of his video would be like a time lapse of him painting the rock. And then the other half would be him. And he never talked on his videos. So the other half would be him just like silently walking through and he'd get like little shots of himself. And then he'd, you know, set it under a stump or something like that. But someplace where someone was likely to come by and find it. And then, yeah. And I know that there's other people that do it too. Esther, Diana, have so, you heard of this um, before? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there's actually some people by me that uh, were doing rocks for a little while, and then they did uh, glass orbs. Oh, cool. So they somehow made these glass orbs and hid those around, yes. and that was a big deal. Check out his channel sometime, Hike One, Paint One. It's it's pretty cool where he leaves the things. All right. Nice. Um, does everybody, uh, you thoroughly gave away the answer, but does everybody have an answer down? Wait. Um. A, rock caching, B, rock balancing, C, rock painting, or D, rock hiding. She thoroughly gave away the answer. Those are the... the... <sighs> I'm definitely changing my answer. But even I don't actually know what it's called. I don't even know what it's called. I'm just guessing. So. Sorry, I'm going to be a pain. Give me the names <clears throat> one more time. I'm sorry. Okay. Oh a, rock caching... B, rock balancing, C, rock painting, or D, rock hiding. You've got to balance the rock on like a place where you put it, Justin. <laughs> <laughs> Fake news. No, that's legit. I don't know. I keep changing my answer. Uh... Just go with B. You'll be fine. <laughs> You have a 25% chance of getting it right. 75% chance of getting it wrong. 25% of the time it works, 100% of the time. I was doing so that. well the first half of this game. And you still have a lead. So even if you yeah. get it wrong, it okay. doesn't matter. Just go. Yeah. Okay. So do we have an answer after all of that talk? Yes. Yes. 
Okay, answers, please. We've got a rock <sighs> hiding. We've got a rock painting. We've got a rock painting. And we've got a rock caching. The answer I was looking for was rock painting. Yes. <laughs> and I put caching yes. at first, but then when you said that she thoroughly gave it away, I was like, she didn't say anything about caching. No, I know about geocaching. That's why I asked if it was like hidden on purpose. You put D though. Um, Me. I did, but I had I had A first, caching. But then I changed right. well, <laughs> D is huh? still wrong. Oh, no. D is still wrong. You, oh, D was rock hiding. So yeah, I was originally putting rock painting because I'm like, that's what they do is they oh, paint no. the rocks and then and they're like, no, no I had at one cache, point so. all the letters down except for uh balancing. <laughs> <laughs> It doesn't matter. My reign as champion has come back, has come to an end. So I will need to make a severe comeback next time. Well, Unless the, I get all three points in this next the, one. The, and the, there's still a chance. Flunks out. But uh, rock, rock painting is an incredible art form that has captivated people for centuries. From ancient cave paintings to modern day creations, it continues to inspire and amaze. The act of transforming a plain rock into a miniature work of art is not only a fun hobby, but also a way to express creativity and connect with nature. Uh, whether you're an avid rock painter or simply curious about this unique form of expression, exploring the world of rock painting is sure to be an exciting journey filled with endless possibilities. Again, that, that was a copy and paste thing. Um, that, they're kind of pumping it up a little bit, but it is still super cool. Um, I love the rock painting that you're showing us right now, Sheree. It's like this very Bob Ross style um, Bob Rock panorama. Bob Rock style. <laughs> Bob Rock style. <laughs> nice. Diana with the wordplay. I'm good at that. Um, very good. Yeah. Uh, that works. On this gray kind of flat rock. Really cool. Yeah. And the message on the back or that it says life shrinks or expands in proportion to one's courage. Wow. That's so. Deep. Yeah, came right at a very good time. So, love it. That's really cool. Riley, can you give us yeah. a scoreboard update before we go into our so, last question, please? Justin is in the lead with six. We have Diana and Esther tied at five, and Cherie with four. So technically, thank you, Riley. Uh, technically, it is anybody's game. Mm. Um, How many <laughs> questions do we have left? One. We're on our last question, but th th this is where somebody can get up to oh, three gotcha. points. Okay. Okay. So it, it, here's the deal. I'm going to read three clues. Um, after the first clue, if you write it down and give me a thumbs up, you're locked in. That is your answer. Okay. No, no changing. If you do it on the second clue, uh, you get two points, but still you are locked in. No changing your answer. And on the third clue, um, you'll get one point if you get it right. No changing your answer. Everybody cool? Sure. <laughs> so much excitement around this. <laughs> We're excited. It's a serious game. It is. But this is on the topic of wildlife. What am I? For three points, the first clue, I am the second largest animal in the rodent family, and I am responsible for the creation of extensive wetland habitats. Shree has her answer locked in. Esther locked in. Diana locked in. Just, oh, everybody's going for three. You're not going to need those other two clues. But they're fun. <laughs> uh, well, we won't stop you from reading them. Uh, I will as soon as everybody gives me a thumbs up. Wait, uh, yeah, Justin, good. you good? Okay, yeah, cool. So that. everybody has their answers locked in. No changing your answer. So everybody's up for three points. The two-point clue is I am an herbivore and the national animal of Canada. Wait, what's happening right now? I'm lost. Still, uh, 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 my I'm, I'm just reading the. I'm just reading the, the second and third clue for oh, the fun of it. Oh, oh, oh. Sure. Yeah, because everybody's yeah, locked uh, into uh, the uh, first. Everybody's already points. locked in. And 
the final clue is I build things in the water because <laughs> damn, it's fun. All right, got it. <laughs> I wrote that one myself. Nailed it. Right, answers, please. Yeah, that was second only. To right. All there. <laughs> did the AI also write this question? No, I did. Did you really think that that was hard? Uh, on the first clue? <laughs> Second, He's so the second largest oh animal. That's hilarious. Hey, I'm glad for some easy second answers. largest animal in the rodent family. I'll take him. I but, was expecting uh, like this tenth question to be like this mind bendingly hard thing. This coming from the person in last like place could, right now. Like, um, if you would, well, that's what I'm saying. Like, I thought I was going to have a chance if you just left off the. the well, I'm responsible for all for the Justin wetlands. <laughs> The no, first we've time. established this. I think we all should I just be is. happy that yeah. Cherie was Diana. Is what I think we need to be. Okay, hold on, hold on, yes. hold on. Yes. Time out, time out. I came in last place. Last. It's all going to depend on who chose to watch Golden Girls yesterday. So, for those of you playing at home, the answer was Beaver. That's what I am for question ten. <laughs> We have thoroughly <laughs> lost control. I, I don't um, understand why that was so funny. I, I don't either. But the, the words "big brown" went through my head. I'm sorry. <laughs> so I'm but, sorry. You're in a you're in a chat with a bunch of lesbians, and then you're... <laughs> and th- there we go. Hey, we're okay. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Neat. Um, <laughs> cool. So. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm originally from Philadelphia and we used to have a college that was called Beaver College. It was a college for girls, but whenever people like parents would do a search for the college, other things would come up and so now they're called Acadia College. <laughs> <laughs> oh. We are so far off the rails. <laughs> um, fun. Well, um, it's like they Riley, never told me about this before. <laughs> Riley, will you give us a final score update, please? Yeah. So I just want to say. Um, Patrick, for future trivia, you should probably consult your secondary scorekeeper for the questions before you actually like, settle on the questions. <laughs> but aside from that, um, Justin won with a grand total of nine. Um, Diane and Esther came in second, tied for eight, and then Cherie was seven. I'm going to have to fight uh, for the fact that I, nice. I think that there's a little bit of a conflict of interest <laughs> Justin being the winner and that Esther, yeah. and, and I should be the winners. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I am a hundred percent. I guess I should have even played play <laughs> like if I can't win. <laughs> no, it's fine. I have established from day one that even though he is my husband, he has no unfair advantage. He has never seen these questions. I make very, very, very. You know what's really funny it. is that I usually I come it. in last place, and now they're giving me a hard time for actually winning. Yeah. No, it's fine. Well, that's just it, isn't it? It's like you know. You, you but you normally do really place, good, so and like, you I'm didn't this time. Wagon. So. Oh, so does that Damn, mean Justin. you're normally cheating on the other ones? Like, what's going on here, Shree? <laughs> <laughs> Look at her face she's giving me right now. I, I, think what, I think what me and Diana are trying to say is that it's awful suspicious that you guys are watching Yeah, Golden I think that that point should be taken <laughs> away. That, that point should like be you're, you're just watching abolished. Just, just take that point away, and then Esther and I should take the, you know. Okay, fine. Today. You we'll two share. can win. You two are the winners. <laughs> oh, Justin, you're I mean, so sweet. On the flip side of it, he did get he did get the ozone layer wrong. So there's that. Yeah, and you got what? a number of the other ones wrong. So. <laughs> he got the ozone layer. Which... Justin's such a sweetheart. <laughs> Esther and Diana oh. can win. <laughs> no, it's fine. It's all good. Oh, no. The, the, um... Just wait for the next one. It's all good. Well, we're going to go ahead and wrap Are this up on a, on a positive note. This was a lot of fun. <laughs> For sure, he starts a fight. 
There's fire coming like from this, them. This eyes whole right room there. is about to burst the flames <laughs> over here. It's cold up here in New Hampshire, but it's not warm where Shuri is. <laughs> Diana can feel it all the way. I over can. We're three miles apart. So. <laughs> Glad I live across the country. <laughs> a big thank you to our players today, Justin, Cherie, Diana, and Esther, and our official scorekeeper, Riley, who not only go together like unicorns and glitter, but they're part of the lifeblood that keeps your LGBT outdoors community running, connecting, and exploring. Again, if you have any cool trivia questions you'd like me to ask, or if you have any thoughts to share with us regarding this episode. <laughs> if you think yes. Esther oh, and right. Diana should be the winners, let us know. <laughs> Patrick needs all the help he can get on these questions, so please. Please send me them. questions. Email them to me at patrick at lgbtoutdoors.com. Be sure to check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash LGBT outdoors to support our mission of connecting the LGBTQ plus community to the outdoors and to each other. This episode show notes contain sources and more information on the trivia questions, as well as the Instagram accounts of all players to learn more about LGBT outdoors as an organization, visit our website at lgbtoutdoors.com. Thank you for joining us. If you enjoyed this trivia episode, like, share, and follow us wherever you get your podcasts. Today. (laughs) (laughs) You know, you're absolutely right. We should do a do-over. Rematch. But 10 AI uh, questions. Rematch. Next time. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> right. Chat GPT. Oh. The AI oh. question, question was kind of, I thought, difficult this week. It was time. one of the hardest like, ones. It was all rock stuff. Yeah. Well, then we'll, it was uh, better than Jane <laughs> we'll, we'll learn, learn more on AI more next time. Uh, but who knows what we'll learn next time on LGBT Outdoors Trivia. Until then, get out there. <laughs> so, uh,